Today, I wanna to talk about five keys to being a great camp staff. That's five keys. G-R-E-A-T, great camp staff. Let's get right into it. Greeting and welcoming. That's your number one job after safety. First, keep kids safe, make sure that they're taken care of, that they feel comfortable. Second is how can we greet them into the space? I like to call this illuminating the hidden curriculum. What you're really trying to do is two things. One, let kids in on the joke. The joke that is camp, the joke that is what you're doing. And the way you do that basically is number two, which is you want to think about yourself as if you're helping kids come to your grandma's house and they're your best friend. Okay, okay, wait a minute. What the heck do I mean by coming to grandma's house? Think about it like this, right? If you're going over to, let's say my grandma's house, you don't know what you're getting into. Okay, so let's think about it like this. You come to grandma's house and maybe I can give you a play-by-play. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen when we get to grandma's house. You're gonna take your shoes off. She hates when people wear shoes. Listen, we're gonna have green beans. They're gonna be all right. The dessert's gonna be bomb, but don't ask about it. Sit at the table. Don't put your elbows on the table. Okay, sit at the table, be polite. She'll take care of everything. She'll bring everything out. Eat the green beans, even though, let's be honest, they're not that good. And then after dinner, don't ask, she's gonna bring out the dessert. It's gonna feel like it's a surprise. It's not a surprise. It's always ice cream. It's gonna be amazing. Appreciate the homemade ice cream and then just say thank you. Listen, it's gonna be like maybe an hour of dinner. Then we can go down into the basement and we can hang out and get up to our own stuff, right? Anyway, see how I'm explaining what's gonna happen, letting you know where the breaks are gonna come, what to look forward to? That's your job at camp. You are helping bring these kids into grandma's house, which is the experience that is camp. It's not something that they're necessarily used to and we do a lot of things differently at camp than we do at home. So you're greeting and welcoming, which is illuminating the hidden curriculum. R, remember it's great, G-R, R, relationship building. This is about getting to know your campers, getting to know the folks at camp so they feel like they belong because they do. I brought a friend, Nelson. Can you explain maybe three ways to do relationship building really well at camp? There's three ways to build one-on-one -on -one connections with your campers. Number one, learn their name. Learning someone's name shows that you took that first initial step into getting to know them and remembering things that they tell you. It is also scientifically proven that people respond better and are more well receptive to whatever you have to say when you address them by their name. And that goes into number two. Remember things about them and learn things about them. How do we do that? We listen. Oftentimes the hardest part about listening to someone can be staying silent and allowing them to speak. A good way to remember to stay silent when you're listening is to remember that listen and silent are made of the same exact letters. When we listen to someone, we want to stay silent. And then after that, if we can remember what they said, think about how awesome it feels when someone does something for you or remembers something about you that you don't even remember that you told them, right? Imagine how warm and fuzzy it feels when someone grabs you an apple from the calf because you, they remember that you said you like fruit or they grabbed you the last warm chocolate chip cookie because they know how much you love chocolate chip cookies. That's the kind of connection that we're trying to build with our campers. Number three, teach them something new. Educate them, or even better, allow them to teach you something new. Our campers are full of amazing knowledge. I've learned so many things from campers over the years, whether that be uh, half of the first 151 Pokemon, all the way up to how to keep a great poker face, which I learned from someone more less than half of my size. I guarantee you that if you can remember these three things, if you can learn their name, if you can listen and stay silent and remember things about them, and then if you allow them to teach you and educate you on new things, your relationships will magnify, not just with your campers, but with anyone you come in contact with. Whoa, okay. Names, listen, and teach and learn stuff with the kids. Okay, I love that. So we've got G, greeting and welcoming, R, relationship building, E, it's all about establishing systems, okay? It's about figuring out ways to make it clear how we get things done so it's not chaos during camp, okay? And what I want you to encourage you to do is three things. One, write the systems down. Just write down what's gonna happen. You can put it on a whiteboard, you can just write it down. Two, communicate with the other counselors that you're working with 
what the roles are going to be for each of you. So I like to think about it like this. Somebody's gonna be in the front of the room, I call that person the lead. They're saying, do this, do that, okay? Then you've got the scrape. That's the people behind that are looking for folks that need help, that maybe have forgotten their toothbrush, that are confused, you're sweeping the back, right? It becomes very clear that the lead goes in the front, they make the jokes, they bring people along for the ride, and then the scrapes bring folks back with them. So let's write it down, that's the lead and scrape, and then let's make it repeatable. For things that you're gonna do every, every night, every day, let's do those logistics the same throughout the week so folks can get into that routine. The kids can get used to that, okay? Okay, so we did greeting, we did relationship building, we did establishing systems. A is amazing memories. You are gonna make some of the most lasting, incredible, amazing memories for kids this summer. Some of them are gonna be planned, some of them are gonna be accidental but I wanna go back to Nelson and hear some ideas on how to really create amazing, magical memories this summer. Nelson, what do you got? Incredible experiences I've ever witnessed at a camp occurred a few years ago in North Jersey. I watched as two young men took 11 campers from cabin four on what is gonna be one of the wildest journeys of their life. <laughs> what started out as a wedding to the largest rock on camp ended with majority of the camp hosting a Viking funeral for a rubber chicken. And I do mean the kind that go Rah! whenever you squeeze them, those kind. Somewhere along the way, these 11 boys and their counselors had a karate battle with Bob Ross, had a dance battle with the Loch Ness Monster, and had tea with the Queen. And after I got over my initial amazement as to how they got the Queen on such short notice, I decided I would ask these young men on how they had come up with such an incredibly magical moment for their campers. Later that night, when everything was settled, teeth were brushed and showers had been had, uh, I asked them, how did you create such a magical moment? To which they replied, we didn't. <laughs> and after uh, my initial confusion had subsided, they continued with, we didn't create it, we facilitated it. I asked them to elaborate on what they had done. What they said was, first, they had asked the campers just in general, some ideas on what they would like to do. They fielded a bunch of ideas, including their own. Uh, and of course, they had to kind of weed out some ones that were viable and not viable. And then the next day, they took all of the ideas that they still had and kind of went around the camp and asked other counselors, they asked directors, and they asked other campers, what are some ideas that I can use to expand on what I already have? And that's how it culminated into this magical journey that these Cabin 11 boys had went on later that day. Now, not every magical moment that you see will be this grand or this extravagant. Magical moments exist in everyday moments such as your secret handshakes, your routine nightly game of apples to apples or mafia, your, uh, your song singing in the, in the calf or the mess hall. Magical moments occur everywhere you go and creating them boils down to three, three, three simple things. What I like to call three C's of magical moment. The first C is community. What they did was they asked their community, they crowdsourced, they asked them questions. Once they found questions within their smaller community of their cabin, they took those ideas to the larger community of the camp as a whole, right? The second C is creativity they decided that they would get creative. And creativity sometimes can, can cause a bit of, a little bit of a stir. And some people think you're either creative or you're not. And I'm gonna tell you the secret to creativity right here. This is the secret of creativity. You take something you already have and you tweak or you switch just one little thing about it, right? Now, they easily could have went to Bob Ross uh, and decided that they would do some nice fancy painting or they would make some happy little trees but instead they decided to get creative and they changed one aspect and decided that instead of Bob Ross being this amazing painter that we all know him as, he was now a karate master and they had to get their black belt somehow, right? So that's the second C, creativity. The third C, and bear with me as this one doesn't actually start with a C, but it does have a C in it, is excitement. They got enthusiastic about whatever it was they were doing. They dressed up in the wedding dress. They decided to speak in, in British accents when they had tea with the queen. They just showed a lot of enthusiasm and character. When you, as a counselor or a supervisor or any kind of uh, camp professional, you are the coolest person in the world to the children that you reach. 
If you're getting excited and you're getting enthusiastic about what you're doing, I guarantee you that their enthusiasm will follow and it will make your adventure or your journey that much more magical. So if you can follow those three C's, community, creativity, and excitement, I guarantee you magical moments will come to you just as naturally as the Loch Ness Monster having a dance battle or a wedding to the largest ball drum can. <laughs> okay, Nelson, your three C's. Community, creativity, and excitement. I love that. Okay, last, the T. We can do a lot of planning, we can do a lot of setting things up, but sometimes things are gonna be hard. Those are the tough situations, all right? I wanna talk a little bit about conflict for one second. It can get complicated here, but when you've got two kids in conflict, I like to talk about it like you're having a circle, you're having a conversation where everyone gets a chance to share what's going on. So I set it up like this. It's a restorative justice framework, but you can use it in a variety of different ways. One, you set the tone and you say, I'm gonna let everyone have a chance to share, but we're gonna go one at a time so we're each gonna listen. Then you say, okay, everyone give us a chance to say what happened. They're gonna have a little bit different stories. That's okay. Let everyone say what's going on. Second, you're gonna ask them, how do they feel? How did they feel in the moment and how do they feel now? So what happened? How do you feel about what's going on? Third, and this one's the one that's important, you wanna ask them what they think we can do moving forward. What do they need? They might say, I just don't wanna play Gaga right now, or I need more fair officiating in the basketball game, or I just want uh, Steve to not sit on my bed anymore. Ask, they might just say, you know what? I just want him to say that he's sorry. And that's okay, we can get to that point and then we can move forward, right? And the last one is agreements that everyone can make. So let's say uh, one of the, the kids is upset and they say, I just really want Steve to not sit on my bed. The agreement, we can go back around and say, can we all agree not to sit on each other's beds without asking, right? So that's what happened, how do you feel, what do you want, and then can we make agreements about how to move forward? Rewinding, let's talk about the five keys to being a great camp staff. G, we've got greeting and welcoming. R, relationship building. E, establishing systems, A, amazing memories, and T, tough situations. Your job this summer is gonna be all about creating the environment where kids feel like they belong, when some things go wrong, working through that in a collaborative way so they can move forward, and creating these awesome memories that they're gonna remember for their whole lives. They're gonna change the way that they think about themselves and view the world. Your job is incredibly important and it's gonna be awesome.